Okay, for problem seven on your homework, we're going to compute some high split trajectories and we're going to do some forward trajectories uh, simulating that one episode that we have as our problem. So the first thing you go to the um, ready.arl.noaa.gov website um, and then go to the high split underscore traj.php, which is on your homework page. And once you go to that page, the, we'll, we'll first click on the Compute Forecast Trajectories. Once you click there, you're presented with this page. And what you want to do, first we'll do a simple run. We'll do one trajectory, and we'll just do at one location. We'll do one called the normal type of trajectory, which is just one, one trajectory at a time. Then we'll hit Next. And then next is... Uh, this page is where you specify the meteorology. That's basically the, the driver for the trajectory model. And we'll get, we're going to choose, at this, this point, the one that's called the HRRR. That is a 3-kilometer forecast model. And it goes out 15 hours in the future. It has a, a, um, meteorology to specify at each hour, and it's all over the continental U.S., so we'll specify that. And since we want to do it from that one location, we'll type it in. We'll make sure and specify the lat long and decimal degrees. We'll specify 32.114, and it's in north latitude, and minus 107. 0.037 in the Western Hemisphere, which is a negative. And since that's the only thing that we want to specify as a source location, we're done with this page, and we can sit, click on the next button, and then this is where it shows you uh, at the point where you uh, specified the the input meteorology, the HRRR. It says okay. Um, is what is available right now in terms of forecasts. So I'm doing this in the evening. So there's a zero UTC uh, meteorology file and the current one that's available for me right now is the one that's available on November 26 of 2016. So I'm gonna, that's the only thing you can go in the past but uh, right now I'll say if you want to specify something that's occurring right now you've got an emergency situation in the evening and you want to be able to run a trajectory. Okay, so let's hit next. And this page is the main page for specifying the model. So this is where we'll be running high split and it's just a, based on the top of the page it tells you what meteorology is available. The current HRRR model has 15 hours of forecast data beginning at November 26, 2016 at 00, zero UTC time, which is good. Everything is up to date. So now we're going to do is, we, since we want to specify where the smoke plume is going to be heading, we'll want to choose a forward trajectory, which is already, which is the default. And the default is using the model, the HRRR input model as our vertical motion. And that's also the default. So choosing that. And let's let's say we want to choose, so the, so the event occurred um, this evening. And we'll, it's 2016, November 26th. This is today that I'm running it. And I want to run it, and this is at UTC time. Remember, this is a UTC. And um, so I'm going to run that. Say it just occurred a little while ago. The current time is 7 uh, UTC. This is about midnight on the, um, the 25th. Uh, actually, yeah, well, actually, er early, early morning on 26. So, say it, it occurred um, at six at six UTC, which is about an hour and a half ago. And we're just going to run a short trajectory, saying we're going to do something at 12 hours. So, how long does the model run? So, the model will be computing a a um, base from at hour six through and then 12 more hours after that. So it, it, from six hour six to hour 18, it'll compute a forward trajectory. And we're just gonna do a simple trajectory and we're not gonna 
create any new trajectory. So I'll do one every zero hours. And then here's just a regurgitation of the location, which you should verify 32.114 minus 107.037. And we're going to do one a simulation. And remember, this is a trajectory model. So it's uh, it starts at a certain height above the ground. And this is in meters above ground level. AGL is above ground level. So we'll do one about 500, well actually not about, but exactly 500 meters above ground level. You can also do one at, a, uh, if you know the the um, uh, actual elevation, you can choose the, the height and above mean sea level. Uh, I don't know what that elevation is there, so I'm just going to choose, let the model decide, and um, choose one at about 500. So why do I choose 500? Well, I, I want to choose something that, remember, and this is sort of the, in between a, a winter and a fall so the mixing height is likely not very very uh, deep and this is going to be a, a ground level fire uh, but there may be some very high uh, energy um, in the fire so there may be some initial plume rise so I would say it's a very large fire so I would say that the, the plume rise would start about 500 meters and then the trajectory would start from there Okay, so you can you can do other um, trajectories. You can choose something at 100 meters, or you can do something at 50 meters, and you can definitely play around and do several runs and then compare them. The first one we'll do is 500, and then we can you, know, you can always save the output and combine them together in the map. And so that brings us to the next section of this input pages, which is how do you want to display the output of the model? You can say none, it will, won't give you any graphics. Or you can choose Google Earth and gives you a KMZ or show it in the GIS shapefile. What we're going to do first, we're going to do, um, do the Google Earth KMZ file first. And then, and we're going to accept all the defaults in the, in the graphics display. And we can always play around and, and change those. But let's do a simple run now. Basically, we've, we've got a four trajectory using the vertical motion of the model starting at um, 06 UTC time. It's about an hour and a half ago and have going to compute a trajectory that runs 12 hours in the future and starting at a height of 500 meters above ground level. And that's all we need to specify for the model. And then we'll click request trajectory. And it'll take a few seconds uh, depending on the um, how busy the traffic is over in the um, Air Resource Laboratory in in Maryland. And it, this page refreshes automatically every 10 seconds. So it'll give you the outputs here on the bottom. And just wait for it to, um, to give you some output. And so there you go. So it didn't take very long. So the model and graphics are now complete. And then there's the output. So as you can see, we, we specify Google Google Earth, and it also gives it to you in a just a static image, a PDF, and then here is your Google Earth files. And you can also look at the raw model outputs, but let's just look at the, the simple uh, static uh, image here. And this is basically a, a map showing the latitude and longitude. So it started here, and this is where the, the event occurred. And then the, in this particular case, there's a south a southeasterly wind, so it's blowing from the southeast, blowing it toward the northwest in the next few hours. So it, it's a, it, this is informative if you know exactly where these points are, but if you don't, you may want to open up this other one. I, I prefer to at least to look at first is the flash map. So it... it reads in a KMZ and then it brings in into a, a Google Maps interface. So I click on that and give it a couple seconds to, to, to read in into files and it plots it out on a, uh, a Google Maps interface. So this is a little more informative because it brings in a nice map layer in Google um, in, in Maps here. And, uh, and, and basically here's our, 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 our fire location. And if you put your mouse over it, which I just did, it shows you where the latitude, longitude, the height of the start of the trajectory, and the time. And then it shows you the the, the next where does the, the the trajectories go over the next 12 hours. So 
and with it, it doesn't tell you exactly what hour things are there is another way to do that but basically it's showing you so this is in the late evening so if, if the event occurred in the late evening you can say that the the, the smoke is going to go toward uh, away from Las Cruces it's going to be going actually toward Deming in a way it's actually north of Deming and toward Silver City um, so that's one way you can visualize um, where what your what your trajectory is going to be look where it's going to be going and let's try um, one more thing you can easily bring it into Google Earth if you click it on that it'll fire up hopefully uh, you have uh, Google Earth as as linked to your computer and then you can save it as something on your computer and then open up in Google Earth I'll let you play with that so one other thing you you which you may may want to do is is uh, go back to the um, previous uh, menus and we'll go back at least another couple and we'll go back one more so one other way is to look at so that's just one trajectory and, and to to um, and this is a model so it's just it gives you a, a prediction based off of uh, one one scenario of the meteorology so what do you say if you you want to say well what is the uncertainty of that of that model run uh, one way to, to address that is to, is to actually run an ensemble and, and the, the description of the ensemble is here it basically starts multiple trajectories from the first location which is that 32.114107037 longitude and then each and it runs different models uh, uh, um, calculations it'll be started at uh, offsetting the meteorological data by a fixed grid vector it's one grid point in the starting and 0 0.01 in the vertical which is in they call the sigma units and it'll basically be 27 model runs and it'll be a different x y and z location so it basically gives you a, a, a way to assess some uncertainty some variability in the meteorology um, in, in spatially uh, in a vertical and it, it gives a little bit of a a spread in the model run so let's try that so let's look at the ensemble to give a little bit of um, variability and it, most time your, your browser would have already saved the uh, the model run so we'll, we'll just verify it so 32 114 10703 and we can make I don't know if it's actually saved the minus let's go ahead and put that back in and hit next and it still has a 0z your UTC file 1126 everything looks good there so hit next and just verify let's do the same forward uh, trajectory model vertical and starting at 6 and running it same thing at 12 uh, hours in the future and at your starting location 500 so everything's the same we just changed the, the model to run an ensemble form and we'll choose the same thing, Google Earth, and accept all the defaults in the plotting, and hit request. And we wait again for about, uh, you know, 20 seconds or so uh, to reload, reload this, and we'll see what the results will be uh, using the ensemble method. And it should be very interesting. Okay, let's look at the static image here. So that gives you, it gives you a little sense of the variability by changing the model inputs just a little bit so let's bring that into our flash map since I like that prefer it as a way to look at things right away so it brings in the, the Google Earth so okay so um, this was showing that there's a little bit of a variability in the model output from your start location and that um, there's a little bit of spread in the where the plume may go in the future and you can zoom in or to see where um, where things go a little more in detail showing that there's the plume may um, spread a little more when it gets down to the point where it's near Deming um, just as a way to assess what, what's going on so at this point I, I probably wouldn't I would alert the officials in Las Cruces if there's a issue here at least for tomorrow morning early tomorrow morning and um, uh, at least for the next few hours um, there's not an imminent risk of, of, of the the plume going to Las Cruces but I would alert uh, the people in Deming 
the uh, the uh, emergency management team there to say that there's smoke on the way and then of course the um, it's crossing the interstate 10 over here so that would be a, a definitely a hazard um, just assessing as this is a tool to to um, as it was as a prediction to to give people um, a heads up so as an emergency response and, um, and remember this is just one model it's not to say that this is um, it won't uh, occur like this but it's um, you have to take all models as as a um, uh, one opinion and you may want to run um, another model and you could always run the, this high split model with another meteorology input and, um, and do um, you know what are um, some different scenarios and heights whenever we chose 500 we could always go back and choose a different height and you can do that through just hitting the back button here and you can specify it in this page even you can choose the um, to say if you want to do a 20 meter and do the same run um, just the I mean, remember you can you can save that KMZ file for later and bring into Google Earth and save that file out so you have at least the, the outputs of that to compare different model runs and then you can even compare it with um, different inputs like this is still using the HRRR at uh, zero UTC you can wait and um, get some other in inputs so this is showing a, a little lower level release so a little more um, um, trajectories that are more localized in this area so um, and then a few of them are are going toward the nor north west based on on our winds that are coming from the southeast which is blowing this direction so I just, that's basically all i want to show and you can play around with um with different um scenarios if you want um all i'm asking is to, is to run it and show that you know how to um specify the high split inputs and to uh, do a screenshot all you can do you can simply do that by if you have a windows machine a uh, print screen or some utility that will capture the, the, the screen and then and go back and specify um, the inputs that you have chosen you can either uh, do screenshots or just write down what inputs you've used and especially like this one using the hrr model at zero UTC at this specific time here you can you can let me know what was available in terms of these you can try the wrap rapid uh, um, uh, re refresh model you can try these other North American models uh, probably not the Alaska or Hawaii one but maybe the, the continental US or the GFS global forecast system um, all these are high resolution and it gives you the, the the model resolution this one's the, the NAM North American continental US is at 12 kilometer the, um, the HRR is at 3 the, this other NAM NES is at 4 kilometers this one's at 12 the GFS is at um, I forget what the resolution of that one is um, probably around 30 or 40 kilometers and this one's at half a degree so you can Please specify what model you use and what time that you specified, like the current time that you expect that you want to simulate. So say I said I wanted to simulate what the fire started at um, at, at six at six UTC, and the current time that I'm recording this is at zero seven forty nine UTC, which is about twelve um, twelve forty nine a.m. in the morning. And so you can um, at least specify that in your homework. So uh, that's about it. And, um, and go ahead and run your simulations.